with the class. So we're down to our week 11. That means that we are already down to the second to the last week that I have prepared for your modules in uh, logic and critical thinking. So there are 12 uh, modules which I prepared for, you, for your, this class, logic and critical thinking. Now, the topic for um, <clears throat> week 11 is the rules on categorical syllogisms, all right? But before we discuss the rules on categorical syllogism, it is, for, it is important for us to refresh our minds on the parts of categorical syllogisms. What are the parts of categorical syllogisms? So let me share with you my uh, PowerPoint presentation on the parts of categorical syllogisms, all right? So these are the parts of uh, categorical syllogism, the premise and conclusion. We have talked um, a lot about prem premise and conclusions when we were still um, in the first act of um, mental, first mental operation of simple apprehension, no? premise and conclusion. No? So there are indicators to, um, to indicate which, which is the premise and which is the conclusion, okay? Um, you know, the, the conclusion is always uh, indicated by the words, therefore, hence, thus, no? So in, in categorical syllogisms, um, we usually use the word therefore, no? That is the conclusion. Now, we also have other parts of the categorical syllogisms. These are middle term, major term, and minor term, right? So let's talk about them one by one. So let's take this, for example, of a, uh, an example of a syllogism. All, all world leaders are educated, okay? That is the first proposition. Second proposition, all educated are critical thinkers, all right? That is the second proposition. And the conclusion, therefore, some critical thinkers are world leaders, all right? So it is very clear in that categorical syllogism uh, where the premise and conclusion is, okay? The, premise, the premises are all world leaders are educated and all educated are critical thinkers, okay? Those are the reasons. Okay, uh, why you are led to a particular conclusion. And the conclusion is, therefore, some critical thinkers are world leaders. That is indicated by the word, therefore. Okay, so let's take this as an example for our discussion. Okay, okay, let's talk about the premise. Okay, uh, we have talked about it a while ago that the premise is the reason behind uh, the conclusion. These are actually the foundations of your syllogism. Okay, and the conclusion is indicated by the word, therefore. All right, um, in, in our example a while ago, the conclusion is therefore some critical thinkers are world leaders. Now, what about the middle term? What is the middle term? The middle term is that term which is common in both propositions in the premise, okay? So in categorical syllogisms, we usually, we, we usually have two premises, okay? And in these two premises, there is a common term, okay, common term. And that is what we call the middle term. Okay, the middle con or the middle concept. Okay, so here, um, all world leaders are educated and all educated are critical thinkers. There is one common term, and that is the word educated. So that take that as our middle term. Okay. Next, what is the major term? Okay, so the major term is found in the major proposition. All right, so we have two propositions here, right, in the premise. Okay, the first proposition and the second proposition. The major term is found in the major proposition. And what is the major proposition? It is old world leaders are educated. Okay, here the concept in the major proposition other than the middle term is world leaders. Okay, so the major term is all uh, world leaders, okay, world leaders, right? So take note that the major term serves as the predicate in the conclusion. Okay, the major term always serves as the predicate in the conclusion. So um, look at this, con look at the conclusion. The conclusion is, therefore, some critical thinkers are world leaders. No, World leaders there is taken as the predicate because it is the major term. Okay, now let's differentiate it with the major term, a minor term rather. What is the minor term? The minor term is found in the minor proposition. Okay, uh, always remember that the first proposition is the major proposition. The second proposition is the minor proposition, okay? Um, uh, re always remember that the major proposition is the upper part and the minor proposition is the lower part, okay? Uh, that's very easy to remember, okay? So here, the concept in the minor proposition other than the middle term 
is called the critical is is critical thinkers and critical thinkers here is the minor term okay so take note that in the conclusion the minor term serves as the subject no so if you look out at our um, conclusion here therefore some critical thinkers are world leaders critical thinkers is taken as the subject because it is the minor term okay minor term all right so let's recap no let's recap uh, where are where is the premise in the in this syllogism? The premises are all world leaders are educated and all educated are critical thinkers. Those are the premises. Okay. Now, what is the conclusion? The conclusion here is therefore some critical thinkers are world leaders. Very easy. Now, what is the middle term? The middle term is the common term that is found in the premises. And what is the common term? No, that that, that common word that is found in the both premises. No, this is the word is educated. So that is the middle term. Now, what about the major term? The major term is world leaders because we have explained a while ago that the world leaders is that term that is found in the major proposition. Okay. Now, what about the minor term? The minor term is that word or term other than the middle term that is found in the minor proposition. So what is the minor term? It is critical thinkers. Okay, take note that world leaders is found in the predicate and uh, minor proposition is found in the subject okay, of the conclusion. Okay, so <clears throat> this is what it look like, looks like in figure. Okay, um, P, P is M. Okay, uh, M, is, M is S, therefore S is P. Okay. This is the uh, this is the format of uh, the the figure of our uh, categorical syllogism in our example. Okay, let's have our exercise for us to um, further identify what are the parts of a syllogism. Okay, now in our example, every nursing student is not happy go lucky. That is a first proposition. Second proposition: some academic achievers are nursing students. Okay, and our conclusion: therefore. Some academic achievers are not happy-go-lucky. All right. Now, let's identify one by one what are the parts of a categorical syllogism. Okay. In our example, what are the premises? The premises are every nursing student is not happy-go-lucky and some academic achievers are nursing students. All right. Now, second question. What is the conclusion? The conclusion is, therefore, some academic achievers are not happy-go-lucky. Okay. Now, what about the middle term? Okay, what is the middle term? The middle term is that common term that is found in both pre premises, no? In the premises. Okay, so if you look at the terms here, we have nursing student, happy-go-lucky, academic achievers, nursing students. Okay, so what is common between the two? That is nursing student. Okay, so that is the middle term. Okay, the, the middle term is nursing student. Now, Next question, what is the major term? Remember that the major term is found in the major proposition. And we know that the major proposition is found in the upper proposition. Okay, the first proposition yung nasa taas. No? Therefore, the major term is happy-go-lucky. Why? Because it is the term that is found in the major proposition, which is other than the middle term. Okay, next. What about the minor proposition? The minor proposition is... Academic achievers, okay, correct. Because academic achievers is that term that is found in the minor proposition. Minor proposition ay yung nasa baba, no? That is the second proposition, no? So, uh, the middle term is nursing student. The major term is happy-go-lucky. The minor term is academic achiever, all right? Okay, in the next second exercise, um, you can do it on your own, no? But I am going to assist you. All right, so we have here, all elected officials are public officers. Some government employees are not public officers. Therefore, some government employees are not elected officials. Okay, all right. So let's identify what are the premises. The premises are, number one, all elected officials are public officers. Number two, some government employees are not public officers. And next question, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is, therefore, some government employees are not elected officials. Okay? All right. 
Now, next question. What is the middle term? You look at the two premises, the two premises here, and look at the term which is common between them. The common term is, you're right, public officers. No, public officers. Okay, so that is our middle term, public officers. Now, what is the major term? The major term is that which is found in the major proposition. And the major proposition is the upper, pro upper proposition, yung nasa taas, no? So our major term is elected officials. Okay, elected officials. Now, what about our minor term? The minor term is government employees. Okay, government employees. So remember that our minor proposition is always the subject in the conclusion and the major term is the predicate in the conclusion. Okay, so our you look at our conclusion, therefore, some government employees are not elected officials. No? So, ayan. so major term, yung nasa taas, minor term, yung nasa baba. Yung middle term, yun yung pareho. Sa, yun makikita mo sa, sa first proposition at sa second proposition, yung common sa kanila. Okay? Oh, third, third exercise. All nations are not perfect. Some nations are members of the ASEAN. Okay? Therefore, some members of the ASEAN are not perfect. All right. So what is the common term there? What is the, sorry, the, uh, the first question is, what are the premises? No? The premises are, all nations are not perfect and some nations are members of the ASEAN. Okay. Next question, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is, therefore, some members of the ASEAN are not perfect. Okay. Now, what is the middle term? That, that term that is common between the two propositions, that is nations, right? You see here, all nations, some nations, that is the common term. Pareho sila. Na meron doon sa first proposition, tsaka doon sa second proposition. Now, what is the major term? The major term is perfect. Okay, perfect because it is found in the major proposition. No, that is yung nasa taas. All nations are not perfect. Okay. Now, what is the minor proposition? The minor proposition, uh, minor term rather. The minor term is members of the ASEAN. Okay. So, kung makikita nyo, uh, the minor term is found in the subject of the conclusion, some members of the ASEAN, and then uh, the ma major term is found in the predicate of the conclusion, are not perfect. Okay. All right. So um, that ends our uh, discussion on. Uh, parts of the categorical syllogism. Now let's move on to our main topic for this module, and that is the rules on categorical syllogism. Okay. All right. So this is our uh, main topic for this module. Now, why did I discuss to you the parts of categorical syllogism? Because it is important for you to identify which is the major term, okay, which is the minor term, which is the middle term, for us to identify the different fallacies later on um, in terms of categorical syllogisms. Okay. okay, so let's start. Law number one, okay, the general laws. Okay. Number one, the law is dictum de omni okay remember this definition no because uh, that will uh, surface later on in your activity number 9 okay um regarding uh, this will be an identification perhaps uh, or or no i i think that is a uh, multiple choice no so take note of these definitions no so that we will not get confused later on law number 1 dictum de omni okay what is dictum de omni it says that whatever is affirmed universally should also be affirmed of its inferiors. Okay? Um, if it is affirmed universally, okay, it should be affirmed in its inferiors. Examples. All students will get a free candy. Aldous is a student. Therefore, Aldous will get a free candy. Okay? Of course, if... if, if uh, if, if it is affirmed in the premises, you cannot get a negative, negative conclusion. Okay? Uh, if there is only affirmation, you cannot put a negative. Okay? Same with life. No? If you affirm, if you affirm, okay, some positive things in your life, you cannot add up negatives. No? So, um, yeah, uh, if, if whatever is affirmed universally should also be affirmed of its inferiors. 
Okay, since uh, it is affirmed that uh, all students will get a free candy, and it is affirmed that Aldos is a student, okay, since all students will get a free candy, Aldos will get a free candy because Aldos is a student, okay? So that is what you call dictum de omni. Now, second, under law number one, dictum de nulo. What is dictum de nulo? Okay, from the Latin word nulum, which means nothing, then you deny it. Omni, in the in dictum de omni, omni means everything, all. So it is affirmed, no? But in dictum de nulo, nulo, nothing. So it means whatever is denied universally should also be denied of its inferiors. Okay? So if, it is, if we say all students are not exempted from the finals, and we say that Aldous is a student, therefore, Aldous is not exempted from the finals. No? Um, sabi, na, sabi dito sa example natin, lahat ng estudyante exempted sa finals. No? E si Aldous, estudyante siya. Therefore, hindi exempted si Aldous sa kanyang finals kasi si Aldous ay isang student. No? Alright. Now, we move on to sec the law number two. Okay. If each of the two concepts respectively agrees with the third or middle concept, that is the middle term, they also agree with each other. No? All right, example, melon is a fruit. Honeydew is melon. Therefore, honeydew is a fruit. Okay. So ito yung ano natin, analogy natin. No? Para na, madali natin maalala itong second law na to. If mommy loves baby, and daddy loves baby, mommy and daddy loves each other. Okay? So if each of the two concepts, no, yung major term, tsaka yung minor term, they agree with the middle term, okay, then they also agree with each other. Alright? Or another example. Another example. Um, a nursing student, a nursing student, uh, is Apollinian. Okay? Um, Apollinian is a Catholic. Therefore, a nursing student is a Catholic. Okay? Because they agree, both, both agree with the middle term that is Polinian. No? So if, if both of the concepts agree, agree with uh, the middle term, they also agree with each other. Very easy to remember. Next, law number three. Okay? Three. If one of the two concepts agrees with the third concept or the middle term, okay, middle term, para mas madali nating maalala, yung third concept na yan is middle term. Okay? If one of the two concepts agrees with the middle term, but the other disagrees with the same third concept, then the two concepts disagree with each other. No? Example, heretics are not holy men. Okay? Manichaeans are heretics. Therefore, Manichaeans are not holy men. Okay? So yung isa, nag a siya doon sa middle term. Yung isa naman, hindi siya nag a doon sa middle term. Therefore, yung dalawang ito, dalawang terms na ito, hindi mag a sa isa't isa. Okay? Very easy to remember. Remember this analogy. If mommy loves baby, but daddy does not love baby, mommy and daddy do not love each other. Okay? O, si mami, mahal niya yung baby niya, pero si daddy, hindi niya lah, mahal yung baby niya. Therefore, mami and daddy do not love each other. Kasi nga nag a sila sa minamahal nila. Okay? In, hindi sila, hindi sila nag a no? Nag-disagree sila sa, min, sa bagay na, o sa, ta, sa baby na dapat nilang mahalin. Okay? So, for example, no? If, if you say that you love your mother, but your boyfriend or girlfriend does not love your mother, then he does not love you at all. He or she does not love you genuinely. No? Because he or she should love what you love. Okay? So that you two will love each other. Okay? Oh. Next, law number four. No? If each of the two concepts respectively disagrees with the middle term or the third concept, then nothing follows. No? Oh. Kung, for example, males are not mothers, sisters are not males, so what? No? Wala kang conclusion. Wala kang conclusion. Bakit? Kasi nga, uh, 
yung oh, sinabi dito um, hindi daw males are not mothers okay? sisters are not males wala kang conclusion na makukuha because both of them both of the terms disagree with the middle term you cannot get a valid conclusion okay example if mommy does not love baby and daddy does not love baby mommy and dad mommy and daddy may may or may not love each other okay wala kang makukuhang conclusion diyan okay um if if mommy for example hindi tinatakbil niya yung anak niya yung daddy rin hindi rin niya mahal yung anak niya it does not mean that mommy and daddy do not love each other it does not mean either that mommy and daddy love each other you you are not sure okay so that is law number four. okay if each of the two concepts respectively disagrees with the middle term then nothing follows. Okay, so let's recap. Recap. Okay, recap tayo. <clears throat> okay, uh, law number two, if the two concepts agrees with the middle term, pareho sila nag agree okay, then the two concepts agree with each other. Very simple. Law number three, if one of the two concepts agrees with the third concept or the middle term, but the other concept disagrees with the middle term, then both and these two concepts disagree with each other. Okay. Next, law number four. Okay. If the two concepts disagree with the same third concept, nothing follows. Nothing follows. Okay. Now, let's move on to our particular laws. Tapos na tayo doon sa mga general laws natin. Let's move on to our particular laws. What are our particular laws? Law number one. A syllogism must have three and only three terms. Hindi pwedeng four terms. Hindi pwedeng two terms lang. Dapat three. Hindi pwedeng five terms. Only three. Okay? Why? Because um, we have the fallacy called the fallacy of four terms. Sa isang syllogism, hindi pwedeng apat yung terms mo. Okay? Um, oh, let's have a simpler example. Example. Okay? A sun is a star. Okay? A um, plan, uh, an Earth is a planet. Okay, you cannot draw any conclusion from that because there are four terms: sun, star, Earth, planet. No, you cannot see a commonality between the two propositions so that you can draw a particular conclusion. No, same with life. No, same with life. If uh, if you do not find any common ground, if you cannot find any common ground between um uh, between two things no you cannot possibly find connection between them it is very hard to find connections between them if there is no common ground okay for example if a and b uh, do not love each other they they do not have anything in common at all then uh it is very hard to find a connection okay that is why in life uh in our experiences no if if uh if we do not see any direction at all in our in terms of our realities around us no it is very hard to find connection and relevance of these things in our lives no? so it is very important to find the common ground okay next law number 1 okay a syllogism must have three and only three terms another violation of it is called the fallacy of ambiguous middle. No? So in the first term, fallacy of four terms. The second, second violation is fallacy of ambiguous middle. Okay. <clears throat> so what is the fallacy of ambiguous middle? Fallacy of ambiguous middle is if two propositions have the same terms, para magkapare magkapareho sila, pero magkaiba pala ng meaning. They have different senses or different meanings. Example, Power corrupts. No? Knowledge is power. Can you draw any conclusion from that? You cannot say knowledge corrupts. No? Because power is used here in different senses. No? In the first proposition, power corrupts. Power is, is understood or defined as a political power. No? Political power that is used by greedy politicians. Ganyan, that is what you call, that is the power that corrupts. No? In the second proposition, knowledge is power. No? Power is understood as intellectual power. Iba yung sense kung paano mo siya ginamit. No? 
So you cannot find any connection between them because the, the middle term power are used differently in different senses, in different perspectives. No? So the middle should have a single supposition. Dapat yung middle term, iisa lang lang yung gamit at iisa lang yung ibig sabihin. Okay? Oh, another example of fallacy of ambiguous middle. No? Uh, fallacy of ambiguous middle. All right? Um, example uh, ng, ng fallacy of ambiguous middle. Um, okay, example. Um, God is good. No? Um, goods perish. No? Goods perish. You cannot say God perishes. No. Why? Because in the first term, God is good. Good there, the middle term good, is used as a, an adjective or description of who God is. He is good. No? In the second proposition, goods perishes. Goods perish. No? Goods there is, used, uh, is defined as yung mga, for those things, no? things or objects or items. Like, like for example, relief goods, no? canned goods. No? Uh, these two have, are used in different, different perspectives, different senses. No? They do not have the same suppositions. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng pag-connect si God tsaka yung perish. Okay? Alright, so that is what we call the fallacy of ambiguous middle. Next. Law number two. Particular law number two. No term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. So dito na pumapasok yung lesson eight natin, yung lesson natin last week tungkol sa distribution of terms. No? Um, distribution of terms. When we say um, distributed, okay? A distributed subject, that means, ano siya, universal yung subject, di ba? Kapag uh, undistributed yung subject, that is particular yung subject, di ba? Oh, pag predicate naman, it is distributed if it is negative. Okay? Kapag uh, it is dis kapag positive naman yung predicate, that means it is undistributed, no? Mm. So, uh, naalala kung naalala niyo pa yung lesson natin tungkol sa distribution of terms, you will get this, no? Okay. So, no term that is undistributed in the premises may be distributed in the conclusion. Okay. So what is what are the violations of this law? No, number one violation, fallacy of illicit major term. Okay, ano ibig sabihin nito? Fallacy, fallacy of illicit major term. Ibig sabihin nito, yung sa premise niya, yung major term ay un, undistributed, no? Pero doon sa conclusion na naging distributed na siya, no? Oh, look at the look at the example here. What is the middle term? The middle term is mind player. Diba? Yan yung common term nila sa dalawa. No? Mind player. Now, what is the major term? The major term is sophists. No? Nasa first proposition siya. What is the minor term? The minor term is thinker. Okay? Thinker. Okay. So, where is the major term again? The major term is some sophists. Sophists. Okay. So what is um, some sophists here? Some sophists here is particular. That means it is undistributed. Undistributed yung subject na some sophists. No? Oh. Ngayon, look at the conclusion. Conclusion is some thinkers are not sophists. Oh. E yung ginamit na siya as a predicate, it became negative. No? Kaya naging distributed na siya. No? So, It, the, the word sophist was used as an undistributed term doon sa premise. Pero nung napunta na siya sa conclusion, as a predicate, naging distributed na siya. Okay? So, ito ay violation ng law number two which says that no term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. Okay? So, the major term is undistributed in the premise yet distributed in the conclusion. Kaya siya tinawag na fallacy of illicit major term. Okay? Kasi yung major term dito na sophist ay undistributed siya doon sa premise 
pero distributed siya na doon sa conclusion. Okay, next. Law number two, a violation number two, the same rule, pero may, dal may violation pa tayong isa, that is fallacy of illicit minor term. Okay? Oh, let's first identify the parts of that syllogism. What is the middle term? The middle term is circle. No? circle. Now, what is the major term? The major term is round. No? What is the minor term? The minor term is figure. No? Ngayon, yung conclusion na natin, every figure is round. Valid ba to? No, it is invalid. Why? Because the minor term is a figure doon sa premise ay undistributed siya. Tingnan nyo, undistributed predicate. No, if it is positive, undistributed siya. No? Okay? Is a figure that is positive. Ngayon, nung naging subject na siya, it already became distributed no? because we, the, it already used universal. Naging every figure na. So from, from being an undistributed term, okay, is, a, is a figure doon sa premise, it already became distributed doon sa conclusion. And it is very clear in law number two that no term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. Okay? So yan yung tinatawag natin na fallacy of illicit minor term. Okay? Next. Okay? Um, example. Um, what example of a valid syllogism? Okay. Good is love. God is good. Therefore, God is love. Okay? That is a valid uh, syllogism. Why? No? Tingnan natin, no? Dito, God, God here is the minor term, di ba? So it is, uh, it is distributed, no? Distributed siya because it is not just, a, it is not a particular, particular subject. So it is, it is universal, so it is distributed, no? So walang, walang undistributed term dito. Let's go on, let's go naman doon sa ano, sa, sa love, no? The major term is love, no? Is love here is undistributed, no? Undistributed doon sa premise. Pero doon sa, doon sa conclusion, na-distribute na ba yung love? No. Kasi is love is positive. So it is undistributed also. So it does not violate the uh, law number two, which is no term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. Okay? Walang violation dito. Okay. Next, we move on to law number three. Law number three states, the middle term must be distributed at least once. Okay? Okay. So what is the middle term here in our example? The, the middle term here is fruits, di ba? What, what is the major term? Mangoes, right? Now, what is the minor term? Bananas. Okay. So sabi niya, sabi ng law number three, the middle term must be distributed at least once. Eh, yung tignan natin yung, yung middle term dito. Our fruits, it is positive. Our fruits, it is also positive. No? So, ibig sabihin yan, it is undistributed. No? So, this is an invalid syllogism because it, it violates the, uh, it, it makes a violation called the fallacy of undistributed middle. Okay? Because both Okay, both of the premise, pre premises have undistributed middle term. Okay, dapat isa, kahit isa lang sa middle terms dyan ay um, distributed. Okay? Next, law number four. The middle term must not be found in the conclusion. No? If, you all, if you look at all our examples, you, you do not always see um, um, the middle term in the conclusion no so it is always the major term and the minor term that are present in the conclusion no the minor term serves as the subject the major term serves as the predicate in the conclusion okay you you look at that pattern no that is our law number 4 okay other particular laws that govern syllogistic propositions 
Okay. Number five law. Two affirmative premises cannot give a negative conclusion. No? Positive plus and positive cannot give negative. Di ba? Common sense yan. Common sense. No? Um, next. From two negative premises, no conclusion can be inferred. No? Uh, that is a corollary to our earlier our earlier law. No? Sabi doon sa earlier law nat sa unang law natin. Sabi dito sa law natin, if each of the two concepts respectively disagrees with the third concept, nothing follows. No? So kung para, para, parehong negative yung dalawang premises natin, ano makukuha mong conclusion doon? Wala. Okay? So that is the meaning of uh, this uh, particular uh, law. No? From two negative premises, no conclusion can be inferred. Next, number seven. No conclusion can be drawn from two particular premises that should be two as in TWO. Okay? Two particular premises. No? If, um, if you have two particular premises, like for example, uh, some apples, some apples are fruits, and uh, some, some oranges are, are fruits. You cannot get up or any conclusion from there, okay? Because it has two particular premises, okay? The conclusion always follows the weaker side, okay? Okay, the weaker side is particular. For, for the quantity, it is particular. Some, which, which makes use of some or many. And for the quality, it makes use of the negative, no negative quality. So those are our those are the basic things that we need to know about the rules of categorical syllogism. Since you are not specializing in logic, I will I only presented to you the basic and the essential concepts that you need to learn concerning the rules on categorical syllogisms. Okay, so you need to also master yourself with these laws, no? Um <clears throat> and um in, in your activity number nine. Uh, you may refer to this power to these slides, no, uh, so that you will not get confused. Um, but uh, it pays a lot if you know these uh, basic uh, laws, no, because these are very important in um, in logic. No? Um, in your um, in your activity number nine, um, the first part is about identification of the parts of categorical syllogisms. Ano yung mga parts na yon? Uh, middle term, major term, minor term. Okay, uh, that's easy now that uh, you have already mastered what uh, what are the parts of a categorical syllogism. The second part of your activity number nine is, I think it's multiple choice. No, uh, let me re refer to my activity nine that I have made. Okay, let me let me just look at it. Your activity nine. All right. So the first part is about the parts of categorical syllogism. The second one, the second part is about uh, true or false, rather. No, uh, second part is true or false. So the second part of your um, activity is true or false. Um, I place there some uh, rules, no? the, the particular laws that uh, are placed in your slides. And you identify whether the rule that I place there is true or false. No? So for example, according to dictum de omni, whatever is denied universally should also be denied of its inferiors. Is it true or false? The answer is false. Why? Because it should be Dictum de omni, uh, dictum de nulo, rather, okay, not dictum de omni, okay. So like that, no, as simple as that, no. It is only true or false. Next part after true or false is um, multiple choice, no. I gave there some examples of syllogisms, one, two, three, four, five, six, six uh, items of syllogisms, and then you identify which fallacy was committed. No? Uh, 
multiple choice naman siya, hindi siya identification. Everything is in multiple choice. No? So is it the fallacy of illicit major? No? Is it the fallacy of four terms? Is it the fallacy of ambiguous middle? Is it the fallacy of illicit minor term? Okay? Or a fallacy of undistributed middle or things like that. Okay? Uh, it's very simple. No? You can answer it... Uh, um, as for as long as you have mastered uh, this particular loss. No? So it pays a lot if you know this loss. Uh, this will be very helpful for you in the future in order for you to have a more logical thinking. You know? um, we have already gone to the point of reasoning. No? Tapos na tayo doon sa mga simple apprehension lang, identifying what, what terms are is, is this and what term is that, what type of term is it. Tapos na tayo doon. Papunta na tayo, mag-level up na tayo doon sa part ng reasoning and argumentation. Okay? So I hope you would be able to answer your uh, activity number nine on rules on categorical syllogism. So wish you all the, uh, wish you all the best. Good luck in your activity nine. And I, uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask me in my messenger. You know, it is important for you to learn. Um, do not, uh, you know, do not just learn just for the sake of grades or scores. You learn for the sake of life, for the purpose of life no uh, you study for life not for grades okay and that will change your perspective about learning you will be more enthusiastic in learning because you know that uh, this will have a um, special purpose you no know, in how you will uh, will become successful professionals in the future okay so um so that ends my uh, my my lecture today um See you, see you uh, on our uh, last lecture on July 11. And uh, God bless.